Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Bill Kerman and today I'm going to be your instructor in this awesome SSTL bootcamp. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to construct this elegant, beautiful and amazing single stage to orbits craft that will actually take you almost anywhere, but specifically to places that require only 4000 Delta V. Ready for this? Let's start! And by the way, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> And while Bill Kerman takes a nap on the moon, let me show you the design you've just witnessed and I'll also tell you more about why it's actually a very effective design for SSTOs and why if you are building one, you should consider using the same sort of engine layout. So let, let's go into the VAB and let's talk a little bit more about uh, the SSTOs. And in the last uh, week's video, I actually showed you how to build a very small SSTO that takes you to orbit and leaves you with about thousand something Delta V left. And today we're going to be basically using the same sort of technique. So start with the command pod. And here is what I actually wanted to do initially. I wanted to put a very, very large tank that's just liquid fuel. Now, obviously you have options here. You can possibly put the orange tank, which is what I originally wanted to do and then just basically replace or uh, remove all the oxidizer or you can even use one of these um, Mark II fuselages that will also give you a little bit of lift and this is what I kind of was originally planning to do but then it didn't really look very good so I decided to kind of use the procedural tanks and instead use um, a design that I've done before where basically you use um, procedural tank and then you attach the Atlas texture to it to make it look absolutely gorgeous I really really like the Atlas textures here and this is what I mean. So here, here we go. Procedural tanks are absolutely amazing. Uh, I don't really consider it to be cheating at all because these are just tanks, right? These are just different shapes of different tanks. So, and then I decided to kind of construct it so it actually looks really, really nice and really uh, interesting. And so I actually made these into cones and added a few uh, different features to them. And, and instead of using a mixed tank, you can here actually specify liquid fuel because what we're going to be using is we're going to, only going to be using two types of engines both of which are using uh, or will be using liquid fuel. One of these engines is obviously going to be um, either a Ramjet or a Rapier. Now, for SSTOs, I only use Rapiers now because, as I've explained in last week's video, these are absolutely incredible at higher speeds. So, uh, if you were to attach this engine and if you, if you were to look at its stats, you would notice that uh, it has the maximum thrust, which is right here, maximum thrust at Mach 3.7, which is a lot faster than Mach 3 for ramjets or Mach 1.7 for basic jet engines. In other words, this engine has its maximum efficiency at higher speeds. In other words, if you're trying to construct a, a spacecraft that is essentially just using repair engines for... Um, uh, or not rapier engines, but air breathing engines for initial boost in the atmosphere, you want to construct something that is going to be most efficient at high speeds, and this is of course rapier engine. But here's a little thing, you want to actually disable automatic switching, because you're not going to be using the secondary mode, you're only going to be using the liquid fuel mode. And this is really, really important. But instead of using um, just rapier engines, I'm also going to be using nuclear tanks. So here, this is what I actually did. Uh, well, this is kind of what my craft looked like. Uh, and I'm going to show you the final design in a second. But basically, you put another tank here. Also, same texture. And this is going to be a cylindrical tank. And then let's just make it a little bit longer and a little bit thicker. And this is also liquid fuel. And so now I'm going to be attaching, um, actually here, let's just put a few more liquid fuel tanks on the sides because this will allow us to have several engines. And on top, we're going to attach one of the um, air intakes. And the ones I like to use are these ram ramjet air intakes because they're really, really efficient. But I also like to place them this way because it looks so pretty. There we go. And lastly, on the bottom, this is where we'll be placing our repairs. And once again, don't forget to make sure to disable automatic switching. All right, so that's basically how we're going to escape the atmosphere, or at least reach um, a really high speed of approximately 1500 delta V in the um, lower atmosphere and upper atmosphere. But now we also need to attach something else on the bottom, 
and specifically what I'm looking at here is the nuclear engine. So this is basically what will take us to orbit, what will circularize the orbit, and also what will then um, help us take uh, take us places, basically. The moon, Duna, I think you can make it to Duna for sure, um, and also possibly even um, Laith, or Laithy, Laith, you know, the other one, the moon of uh, Jewel. Um, I haven't tried it yet, I'm going to try it in one of the future videos, but uh, since you can land on the moon and then have enough fuel to return from the moon, I am pretty sure this SSTO can possibly uh, possibly take you even farther. One thing I didn't attach to this is the parachutes, because uh, you'll be going at a really fast speed, so if you attach a parachute to the top here, it will actually explode. Uh, so I would suggest using side parachutes somewhere inside maybe, like maybe even underneath this, or uh, maybe even just putting a cone here on top just to de decrease drag and um, using parachutes in some other way or just using these engines to slow down because I don't think a parachute on, on, in the front here will be very very feasible anyway so let me show you my design that I have currently and so this is what I've constructed it's sort of a little bit bigger it does have a lot of engines specifically I think it's 12 it has 12 engines on the side and then four nuclear uh, engines on the bottom you can definitely find an optimal size and optimal number here if you play around with, with these values and basically you kind of try to find just the right amount of nuclear engines and the right amount of repairs that will uh, take you to the um, to orbit I know this is, might be a little bit too much and a little bit overdone, but actually it does work and it will actually easily take you to uh, to orbit. So let's find out how we do this time and I'll show you um, the actual takeoff procedure and we'll, we'll be making it to orbit today. And right before we do that, so basically this is actually four procedural tanks that kind of give the, this sort of bullet-like shape, which I, I think is pretty cool. If you look from the top and if you look from the side, it looks like almost like so it looks like a UFO or something, but a really awesome fast UFO. All right, so let's start the launch and we'll see how it goes. Excellent, so we are ready for launch and Bob Kerman is our pilot today. It's unfortunately nighttime, but that's okay because we are going to be flying east, so uh, we're going to meet Sun on the way there. So you'll notice that as soon as I actually start my repair engines, uh, even with 12 engines, this will be a relatively slow takeoff. In other words, TWR here doesn't actually go above 1.2. And so we have to be really careful with how we take off. I'm going to do this really, really slowly um, and try to pitch or do the gravity turn almost right away because I want to gain speed laterally more than I want to gain speed horizontally. And here we go. So we're going to be doing this really slowly. You'll notice if, if my nose starts falling down too much, I just have to gain enough velocity going sideways for me to return back to normal position happens sometimes but not always all right and so here um, here's the problem with this sort of design uh, and the problem is that it will go ridiculously fast it will go so fast as a matter of fact that sometimes in the lower atmosphere if you're going too fast you may actually explode So you need to balance your um, velocity and also your altitude gain because if you're going too fast at a lower altitude, you're definitely going to explode. So right now I need to really watch my uh, my speed. I don't want to go too fast, especially um, here below 10 kilometers. After 10 kilometers, you can basically blast your engines, but until then I would suggest maybe lowering your thr throttle a little bit, otherwise you're going to definitely explode. Um, this cone will hopefully not really uh, catch fire, but if it does, we're going to be in trouble again. But, okay, here we go. So this is 4 kilometers, we're going at 370. Now we can start accelerating a little bit more. And now I'm going to basically blast my engines full speed ahead and start both accelerating, but also gaining altitude at ridiculously high speeds. So, Alright, so 500 meters per second, um, almost 600, 600 now and it's just going to go higher and higher. My ship is really, really hot right now, but I just have to make sure that I'm going toward my prograde velocity for me not to explode. All right, here we go. Let's also disable the temperature gauge. And it's 11 kilometers, we're at 1200 meters per second. Basically, we're over kilometer per second already. This is 1300. 
and this is basically where um, repair engines are absolutely amazing. At this speed, I am getting uh, over two TWR. If I were using ramjet, they would be, they would not be even functioning right now. They would be barely providing any thrust. But with these engines that I'm using right now, with um, repairs, we are getting ridiculous speeds. So right, so we've reached speeds of close to six, six, 1600 delta V, uh, which already provides apoapsis of 36 kilometers. But at this point, I'm going to also enable my secondary engines, which are my nuclear engines, right about now. So what we're going to do now is try to reach orbit uh, by positioning ourselves toward the prograde vector. And also, as soon as we pass 40 kilometer mark, we're going to start aiming toward a little bit higher toward the horizon, maybe about 40 degrees, uh, 45 degrees above the horizon. Because what you want to do is you want to not just gain speed, but you also want to gain altitude. Because otherwise, you're going to fall back to uh, to Kerbin. And I think we're going to start doing that right about now. So here we go. So I'm going to just gently position myself this way. And this will lift my uh, apoapsis at the same time as I'm getting some velocity here as well. All right, so we're coming up to this last stretch where I'm going to get apoapsis of about, so let's just say we're going to stop at 70 something. And at this point, all I need to do is just circularize my orbit. And this will require just a little bit of TW or, or delta V that is, and this will be the end of this maneuver. Uh, so I did kind of spend a little bit more uh, delta V, a little bit more fuel because this wasn't a perfectly efficient launch. Uh, usually I get anywhere between 3,500 and 4,000 delta V left. Um, it really depends on the angle of attack that you have in the beginning. So if you're going to a, a little bit um, too steep, like if you're going at 40 degrees above horizon, you will possibly uh, not save as much delta V. The same thing goes for if you're going too low. If it's like 10 degrees, you're going to be going too low and you're going to waste way too much fuel on um, on air pressure and a lot of the air drag will slow you down. However, if you have about 20 degrees, maybe 15 degrees, you will normally have a perfect, very, very efficient takeoff that will leave you with quite a lot of delta V left at the end and you will then be able to um, circularize and still have something like 4,000 delta V left at the end. And this is the last uh, circularization maneuver that will take us to orbit around Kerbin and will leave us with at, with at least 3,500 delta V left. All right, and here we go perfectly. This is a circular orbit of around 70, 71 kilometers. We still have uh, 3,517 3, delta V left. And essentially this is an SSDO that is ready for exploration of Kerbal's uh, Kerbal system. Um, you can definitely take this to the moon. You can definitely take this to Minimus and a few um, easier to reach planets. Um, I'm thinking Duna, possibly Leith and uh, maybe even land on um, Dress or Elu because these uh, these bodies don't require as much delta V and normally um, using four nuclear engines will provide enough, enough TWR to land and then to also escape. Um, now you can definitely optimize this sort of design. Uh, I think if you were to add a, a larger uh, tank and also include even more engines and possibly uh, keep the same number of nuclear engines, you may even have higher delta V. I think this would possibly go to uh, even 5,000 if you were to optimize this. But what I would like to ask you guys is, uh, let me know if you can find a more optimal design, if you can think of something that provides even more delta V using just two types of engines uh, without using the ion engines. I, I'm pretty sure that if you were to add ion engines here, you could cr get crazy amounts of delta V. Uh, with ion engines on the side or on the bottom, you can basically propel this ship to the farthest reaches of uh, Kerbal system. But with just nuclear engines and just um, repair engines, I'm not sure how far you can go. Uh, but if you do find a cool design, let me know. Post it in the description. Or, sorry, post it in the comments below. And maybe we'll try to construct it together next time. Anyway, Mr. Bob Kerman is going to go for a little EVA and explore the ship from the outside. But basically, that is it. This is uh, the SSTO design that I, I've been using for quite a few weeks now. And I think it's probably a very efficient design that will uh, definitely work for quite a long time, even if they introduce new modules and uh, new engines into Kerbal Space Program in the future. 
Now, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please subscribe and like this video. And also check out some of the other Kerbal Space Program videos that I posted in the description right here. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy Kerbal Space Program. Watch out for more space videos and game you later, guys. Bye-bye.